A new twist in the case of rapper Y&W Melly. The Florida rapper is suing the Broward County Sheriff and the Sheriff's Office claiming he's been illegally detained under conditions that violate his constitutional rights. Melly, whose real name is Jamel Demons, has been behind bars for more than five years, accused of murdering his childhood friends Christopher Thomas Jr., a.k.a. Y&W Juvie, and Anthony Williams, a.k.a. Y&W Sack Chaser, and staging the shooting to look like a drive-by shooting. His lawsuit against the Broward County Sheriff's Office comes more than a year after a judge declared a mistrial in his first double murder trial, which could have carried the ultimate punishment of the death penalty. According to the suit that was filed on Saturday, Melly is seeking to be released from jail immediately because he's being illegally detained under conditions that violate his first, fifth, sixth, eighth, and 14th Amendment rights. His attorney claims for more than three years, Melly hasn't been permitted to make a single phone call or have a visit with his family or any member of the outside world, including his mother. The suit says Demons has and continues to be subjected to the type of debilitating isolation that renders his conditions of incarceration cruel, unusual, and beyond belief in a civilized society governed by constitutional safeguards. Not only has Melly allegedly been unable to have contact with loved ones, according to the suit, he's also had restrictions placed by detention officials, which have impeded his interactions with his attorneys and ability to prepare for his upcoming retrial. Following his mistrial in the summer of 2023, there's been several twists and turns in the case. The lead prosecutor was removed, Melly has had a change in defense attorneys, and the case has been halted pending a ruling on an appeal taken by the state attorney's office. But according to Melly's lawyers, even throughout it all, he still is allegedly abused and denied bond. The suit claims the sheriff's office has been forcing his attorneys to meet with him in conditions that interfere and impede the privacy and privileged nature of his communications with his lawyers. The suit references one instance around April of 2022, when an inmate filed a grievance report after Melly refused to buy him food from commissary. The inmate alleged in that report Melly was planning to escape from jail by having his attorney bring in two handcuff keys to aid in the escape. According to the suit, Melly's jail cell and another inmate cell were searched during a shakedown, which unearthed commissary items and excessive jail-issued clothes, which were confiscated and disposed of. However, Melly was found to not have done anything wrong, and the investigation was closed on April 11th of 2022. But despite not doing anything wrong, he was moved into solitary confinement, and all of his phone communication with the outside world was seized. According to the court filing afterward, two of Melly's defense attorneys tried to visit him and weren't allowed entry into the jail facilities and not given a reason for the denial. After Melly's attorney, Stuart Adelson, filed a motion regarding the interference with his right to counsel, so a judge summoned the sheriff's office attorney to court. According to the suit, the Broward County Sheriff's Office attorney said there was an open investigation against Melly because there was a threat to the security of the jail, and the attorney alleged there was a shank found in Melly's cell. But the judge instructed the attorney the jail couldn't restrict Melly's contact with his attorneys, and the jail would have to come up with another plan so Melly could meet with his defense team. So as a result, Melly's visitation with his defense team took place in a visitation booth, which according to the suit made it impossible for Melly to review any documents due to the plexiglass device. And the visitation room wasn't large enough to accommodate Melly's attorneys, so anyone also standing outside of the room could hear everything that was said in the room, which violated his rights to private and privileged communications. We've been closely following the YNW Melly trial since the start, and part of the reason we're able to keep bringing you this story, plus so much more like it, is because of our sponsors like Upside. So I want to thank Upside for sponsoring this story. If you're wondering what's Upside, well, it's a free app that gets you cash back on daily essentials like gas, groceries, and restaurants. Sometimes I only have time for a quick lunch break, but then there are times I can have a nice sit down at a restaurant and I can use Upside for both. Plus, I can use Upside to get cash back when I do. It's so easy and simple to use and completely free, so why not? And it's actual real cash back too. It's money that appears in your Upside app that you can transfer straight into your bank account. So here's what you do. You download the Upside app, claim an offer for whatever you're buying on Upside, you pay as usual using a debit or a credit card, and follow the steps on the app and get paid. You can use Upside at places like Chipotle, 7-Eleven, Taco Bell, and so many other places. So why not check it out and see if your favorite spot is on the app? To find out how much you could earn, click the link in the description to download Upside or scan the QR code on your screen, use our promo code LCNEWS, and get an extra 25 cents back on every gallon on your first tank of gas. Again, that's promo code LCNEWS for an extra 25 cents back on your first gallon of gas. 
Then on December 1st of 2022, Melly was moved to a unit inside the jail that was meant to accommodate 24 inmates. However, according to the suit, he was the only one with no privileges, no TV, and no access to newspaper. The suit states when plaintiff was allowed his hour out of the cell, all other inmates had to go back inside their cells. The suit claims jail officials threatened Melly if he told his attorneys about his treatment, saying they would keep him away from the world. According to the filing, Melly hasn't had phone privileges since May 8th of 2022 and has not had private visitations with his defense team since March of 2022, a year before his first trial. But as of recently, Melly was moved to the Paul Rain Detention Center and housed on a floor with no one else. According to the suit, his door has been removed from the cell, and a member of the emergency response team is shadowing him 24 hours a day, and they were instructed not to speak with him. The filing says Melly went without any human contact for several months until the Broward County Sheriff's Office moved him again. According to his attorney, the isolation has inflicted an enormous emotional impact on him and is designed to deteriorate his mental health and ability to prepare for trial and they are requesting Melly to be immediately released from custody. During a news conference on Monday, Melly's mother, Jamie King, told reporters she'll continue to fight for her son. She said, Jamel, if you watch this today, I just want you to know that I love you. I'm going to continue fighting for you, and I just want to know that you're okay. I just want to hear your voice and see your face, and I'm going to get you home. It's unclear if the suit will prompt a release from custody as Melly awaits his retrial in the double murder case. But the Florida rapper is slated to appear in court again early next month. A lot to break down in this lawsuit. Let's So let's bring on trial attorney and litigator Rich Schoenstein. Rich, always great to see you. You know, we're more than a year after a, a mistrial was declared in the case of YNW Melly. However, according to this lawsuit, Melly has been in deplorable conditions and his rights have been violated since he's been locked up in Broward County. What's your reaction to this lawsuit? Well, I had two things really jumped off the page for me when I read the uh, lawsuit. One is just thinking about the fact that he's been in jail since 2019, whatever the conditions are. That's a long time to hold somebody who hasn't been convicted of anything. He went, you know, he's been charged. There were good reasons to keep him in jail pending trial. That first trial happened and it was a mistrial. Now there's going to be another trial, I guess, September of next year. So we're still almost a year away from the next trial and he's still in jail. So so that jumps off the page. But the other thing was some of the specific allegations in this complaint happened in 2022. He's talking about incidents that went on two, two and a half years ago. And I sort of wondered, why is this motion just being filed now? And that was going to be my question to you. Why do you think the suit was filed now and not even before his first trial or even after the mistrial, especially as the suit um, alleges he hasn't been able to have private visitations with his defense team since March of 2022, nearly a year before his trial even began? Well, I think the impetus for filing it now is the fact that this new trial has been scheduled put off until September of 2025. So he's staring down almost a year of confinement under, you know, presumably the same conditions that he's been under. And his team might have thought, we can't let that go on for another year. Let's make a motion. So that's a possibility. Maybe they felt like prior to the last trial, they wouldn't have enough justification to make the motion. But with all the passage of time, they have that in addition to the other things they're alleging. But to me, if there are really heinous inappropriate conditions, they, they need to be addressed, you know, right on, right at the time that they come into fruition. If he's not being allowed to talk to his attorneys, they should have been screaming to the rafters for the, from the moment that occurred. And, you know, jail is is jail. We I think we all understand that it's not a luxury stay at this nice hotel. What do you make of that aspect, given that in these allegations they are saying and they are alleging they haven't been able to fully prepare for the case and the retrial? He's been in isolation, hasn't been permitted to make a phone call even to his family for about three years. Right. So so jail is jail and nobody in jail likes the conditions and Nobody does. And if you do, there's a problem with the jail system. So, but this is not about him being in jail. And it's not even just about the length of time he's been in jail. It's really about two things. One, 
being isolated completely from the world, including his family, and two, not being allowed full access to his attorneys, which he says, I think correctly, he needs to prepare for trial. He needs to prepare for the next trial. He needs to be able to meet with his attorneys. Those are the things that take this out of the ambit of what would otherwise be a normal case of a prisoner protesting their conditions. And you wouldn't think very much of it because prison is not supposed to be a vacation. And what do you expect the response from the Broward County Sheriff and the Sheriff's Office to be? Well, I so first of all, I'll tell you what's not going to happen. He's not going to get released. The ultimate relief they ask for in this motion is for him to be released. And I don't know why you would get from the complaints he's made all the way to release. Uh, either they have a basis to keep him incarcerated prior to his new trial or they don't. I believe they do, and therefore he's not going to be released. So the sheriff's department is going to have to either dispute the treatment that he's getting or justify it, or perhaps some mix. I mean, I could see them saying, listen, we've had to restrain his communications with the outside world because We had concerns about him intimidating witnesses and interfering with the trial, even while being imprisoned. And that's why those restrictions were put in place. And we had concerns about him interacting with his lawyers. There was this prior suggestion that he and one of his lawyers were plotting an escape, and we had to take precautions against that. And therefore, we've put some precautions. So I could see them saying we we have had to put in some extra precautions, but at the same time, it is not so restrictive. And I, I mean, I hope they have some answer to the allegation that he hasn't been able to talk to his mother for three years. I, I would find that problematic for any prisoner not to be allowed to even talk to their parents for three years. I don't know if it's true. We'll hear from the sheriff. Uh, Hopefully the sheriff will have something to say about him being permitted access to his lawyers in a meaningful way. Um, You know, if a lawyer went there and had to wait a few hours, which is one of the things alleged in the paper, such is life. That happens all the time. Lawyers who go to jail to see their clients will tell you it's not always the friendliest visit. Um, But at the end of the day, they have to get access. Yeah, and I'm sure they definitely want access, given that this retrial could be very as high profile as his first trial could be. Rich, I wanted to ask you, do you think that this is all a ploy just to be released immediately? But if not released immediately, do you think it it has enough grounds for potentially for Melly to go up for bond? No, I, I again, I don't see... To me, the answer to this motion, if it is meritorious, would be to change the conditions. If he's not allowed to call his mom, let's come up with a way he can call his mom. If he's not allowed access to his lawyers, let's come up with a way for him to have access to his lawyers. You don't jump all the way from that to let him get out of jail or let him post bond or any of that, because presumably we've been down that path already. Uh, I believe he applied for bond and the judge said no, and he's been in jail and we've made the decision that he remains there even pending a second trial. So we've made all of those decisions. The issues raised in this motion could be addressed with far less than letting him out. And do you think part of that reason is because he is up for double murder? He was facing the death penalty in his first trial. And again, you know, I think we all know the facts of the case, how he's accused of allegedly um, murdering his two childhood friends. But say, for instance, Melly was charged with drug offenses or something of that sort, maybe even a RICO charge. Do you think that the conditions or excuse me, do you think that um, we'd even be having this discussion of a lawsuit because maybe he would potentially be treated differently? Well, I think he would be treated differently if the charges were different. You know, these are homicide charges. And also the suggestion that he's been involved in witness intimidation, the idea that he might try to interfere from the trial with the outside. Right. So what do you what do you consider just as a general notion when you're considering whether or not a prisoner can be out of jail awaiting their trial? You look at the severity of the crimes alleged. You look at the risk of flight. 
and you look at the risk of misconduct if that person is allowed to be out. And then we think about ways we can deal with that. We can deal with flight. We can, you know, put on an ankle bracelet. We can come up with other restrictions. But uh, I think all of those circumstances combined here has led to a conclusion that it's not safe to have him out pending trial. What do you make of the allegations in the suit where Melly is alleging his amendment rights are being violated by being in these isolated conditions and being in these deplorable conditions and not being able to speak with his lawyers properly or his even his family? What do you make of kind of the um, the amendment aspect to this right. whole thing? Well, a lot of the allegations are sort of conclusory. The conditions are deplorable. It's cruel and unusual punishment. It violates my constitutional rights. I don't actually see a lot of specific allegations that support those conclusions, except for the allegations that he's been, uh, his communications with his family have been prohibited, and his communications with his lawyers have been prohibited or severely limited. You know, the lawyers are a fundamental constitutional right. He has a right to representation. He has a right to talk to his lawyers, to strategize with his lawyers, to work with his lawyers. So if that was true, that would be, to me, a violation of constitutional rights. Uh, is cutting him off from his mother cruel and unusual punishment under the Constitution? I don't know probably inappropriate unless you have a really good reason. Hey, right. Well, Rich, I appreciate your insight into this suit, and I expect we'll see more developments kind of come out in the coming days. Before we sign you off, is there anything else about this you'd like to add? No, I mean, it's a, I, uh, I don't think so. It's a very, it's a very interesting case, of course. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised it's going to take him so long to get to the new trial. I don't know why you need all of that time if he was tried back in 2023, why it's 2025 before we're going to have a second trial. But I suppose someone has an answer to that. It does seem like an awfully long time to have someone who hasn't been convicted of anything in jail. And I totally understand why the defense would raise this issue and why some people might be concerned about it. All right, Rich Schoenstein, again, thank you so much for your insight into this and your time today. I appreciate it. Okay, great to see you. Take care. A judge set YNW Melly's retrial date for September 10th of 2025, but he's set to appear in court on December 5th for a pretrial meeting regarding his witness tampering case. Reporting for Law and Crime, I'm Elizabeth Milner.